Maybe listening to this will give someone the permission to say, hey, I'm just I'm just going to be home. Because I do think there's a lot of societal pressure to do all the things all the time. They're valuable, good things, but there is something to loving the ordinary days. And I think that's where so much of this comes back to for me. Getting my life to a point where I love the ordinary and I am discipling my kids in loving what is ordinary. That is what education and discipleship is, teaching you what to love, giving our kids this idea of what is good and beautiful and what a life worth living looks like. My name is Lisa, mother of eight and creator of the blog and YouTube channel Farmhouse on Boone. Join me as I share with you my love for creating a handmade home from scratch cooking and a little mom and entrepreneur life along the way. Welcome back to the Simple Farmhouse Life podcast. Today we are having on someone that you all might know if you've been listening to Christian music anytime in the last 15-ish years, something like that. I'm just guessing. Um, I'm mostly just on my Amazon Music app or Spotify these days, but I used to listen to the Christian radio station and Francesca Battistelli, that's who's coming on today was on all the time. So I know her songs, you probably could sing them too. We're going to chat about her leaving the city or at least town. I I don't know how much of the city it was or in Nashville, go to the country to homestead, homeschool, basically live the modern dream, right? Like this is what we all seem to want, especially if you're listening to this podcast and what that looks like, how she balances it with her music career and with her family of she has six kids and a little homestead so there's a lot that goes into that and then there's a lot of priorities and lines that had to be drawn so we are going to chat about that so without further ado let's listen to this interview with uh, Francesca Battistelli thank you so much Francesca for joining me I'm really looking forward to chatting with you we're gonna talk about your journey into homesteading homeschooling all of that stuff but then one thing as I was looking through the ideas of what to talk about with you that kept coming up with with different people and things I've been asked is balance and how, you know, all of those things work together. And you have a bit of a, a music career as well. So let's start with introductions. Tell us about you, your family and your homestead or whatever else you want to share. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me. I'm excited when uh, Leanne reached out. I was like, yes, I would love to do this. This is really, really fun to just get to chat. Yeah. So my name's Francesca Battistelli. That's actually my maiden name, but that's how most people know me. So Goodwin is my my last name. And we have six kids. We homeschool um, and we live outside of Nashville, a good ways out in the country in Tennessee. And yeah, we've been here at this spot for a little over two years. So we have over 30 acres and kind of trying to figure out how to be homesteaders. And it's been it's been a really fun journey so far. Okay, so what prompted the move out into the country? And where where were you living before? Like, were you in town or how'd that look? Yeah, we were in town. We were in Nashville for, I guess, about eight years, seven or eight years, um, just right on the border between Nashville and a suburb. And we loved it. I remember when we moved in, we had about an acre and we had two kids at the time. And it was pretty immediate after that, that we were like, oh, I think one day we want to have land. <laughs> and then it was just this waiting of, okay, Lord, what does that look like? And, you know, will that ever happen sort of thing? Yeah. But yeah, we've just, because c- we were really trying to think recently, like when did this desire in our hearts, where, mm-hmm. when did it start? And we can't really pinpoint a moment, but we just know it's been years of of wanting to be just a little further from the crazy um just wanting to have space. You know, we have, like you, a lot of children and they right. just the ability to say, go outside and not have to think about it. I I, yes. I can't remember. It was only two years ago, but I, I go, how did we live before when it was like, mm-hmm. there's a road and a street and neighbors and <laughs> yep. we're so mm-hmm. blessed. And then of course the, the homesteading part, wanting to be a little more self-sufficient and raise our own food. We've always loved to do things naturally and organically and just tried to get as close to how God intended things as we can. So getting to play a bigger role in that um, has been a real gift. Yeah. As far as your journey out of town and and whatnot, that sounds very similar to mine where when people ask me, like, have you always wanted this? I'm like, well, I don't really remember when it started. I know it was years, though, 
before we actually got it from when we were right. first thinking about it. But I, I'm like you, like, I'm like, I, I think for the most part, yes, but it wasn't instant. When we bought our house, we thought we'd stay there a little while, like the one that we bought in town. So yeah. I don't think I thought that when we first got married, but at some point, mm-hmm. it probably also does go along with as you have more kids, because you're totally. right, being able to send kids outside. And that is something that a lot of, if, if you're not in that situation, it's really hard to imagine. And if you don't have older kids, you know, that you could, and just what that does for you to be able to send kids oh, outside. Totally. It's a whole different <laughs> totally. world for you. Yeah. It, it is. And to have things for them to do productively. I mean, we have all the vehicles and things they can ride, but they also will go. My my five-year-old is like the champion of raspberry picking. So every day I know I'm going to, I don't have to pick the raspberry, yeah. you know, in the summer he'll do it. And, you know, my older two do chores and feed the chickens. And it's just cool to see them take on more than you even think that they can do. I think our culture is so, we kind of want kids to be I don't know. We don't always give them the opportunities to show that they, you know, kids love meaningful work Mm -hmm. and they're able and capable to do more than we give them credit for sometimes. So it's cool to kind of push ourselves in that and, and see what they can come up with. Yeah. It does give you a lot of opportunities to give them things to do whenever you, you have a homestead. There's a lot of little jobs that even a three-year-old can do. So that does lend itself to it quite nicely. So with the, the homesteading lifestyle balance is a a question I get a lot because you have six kids, you homeschool. And then to what extent, I know you do shows, but maybe you don't do like near the amount you used to, to what extent it does your career still play a role? Yeah. Well, it's funny. I, I was thinking about this and we're kind of about to put it to the test. because So we had my, our fifth baby in 2020. So January of 2020, we were already planning on taking that pretty much entire year off of touring. We've been kind of scaling back since 2016 when we had our third going, this is not a sustainable lifestyle from the standpoint of we're going to be on the road 200 days a year. I mean, a lot of Christian artists, that's how they, how they do it. And we were inching towards that right until we had our third baby. And we just mm-hmm. went this just no we can't that's and, so and, <laughs> much <laughs> it's insane even 100 yeah. even 75 like it's a lot right you yeah. kind of have like your the norm is the road the yeah mm-hmm. and your home is sort of like the the anomaly and we wanted to flip that so mm-hmm. since 2016 we have been slowly working towards that and i can't even tell you how we've gotten here except that we just keep putting it before the lord and he keeps providing because for a touring artist especially in christian music touring is really the only way the main way that you survive financially. So the Lord has just continued right. to, to, to just provide, which is awesome. So we had been slowing down, but still, you know, doing a good bit. And then 2020 happened. We were already taking the year off. So it felt like, I mean, I remember our booking agent saying, you guys look like geniuses because everyone else is scrambling. Like, what do we do now? We were had all this uh-huh. issues. So kind of regrouping at the end of that year going, what what, when even can people tour again? You know, cause it was tricky there for a while watching friends go through that and shows would get canceled or whatever, just because of lockdowns and all of that. So I, we have just taken, we've really taken three years, two and a half years of barely doing anything, maybe a show a month, maybe, maybe three shows a year, certain years. So very little. Okay. Um, and it's been absolutely wonderful. And we've loved it. And for most of this time, I haven't had any desire to even really <laughs> go back to what things were. And we st- we won't, we're, we don't have yeah. that desire to, to go back to the crazy, but I am starting to see how the Lord is going to, um, things are just happening. So I'm making a, an album. Um, I have two more that I, I have to make with my label anyway, and I've been sort of putting them off and I'm finally at the point where I'm excited. We've got Six songs started recording just in the past two weeks and um, talking about some tours for next year. So all that to say, very roundabout answer. It has been pretty easy to balance because there hasn't been a lot. But really, honestly, I've, I've seen the Lord provide in with people to help with, you know, systems that I didn't have with whatever so many times over the years that I just know, even though I can't necessarily like see exactly how he would do it. I know that he will. So yeah, we're praying about what next year is going to look like and um, trying not to take on too many new 
things in case, you know, we are a little bit busier. Though I say that and I also am constantly talking about cows with my friend down the road. So (laughs) we will see how self-controlled I can be. (laughs) Right. Yeah. With new animals. But yeah. But even just, you know, even taking the career out of it and and you've scaled Mm -hmm. that way back, but just homeschooling and homesteading in Mm -hmm. itself, that can be a lot to balance. Have you found like what have been some really impactful systems or any like things that have been life changing or has it just been slowly adding, you know, different habits with your kids and it's been built over time or yeah. How's that? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think that we're still in the, you know, elementary school stage of that because Mm -hmm. we started homeschooling in 2020 in the last two years we were part of a co-op. So I felt a little bit on autopilot homeschool wise this year, we've kind of shaken everything up and, and we're doing it totally on our own. And so, I I feel a little bit like I'm starting over, but it's been really good homeschool wise to just take back a little bit of that ownership. Not that I, I gave it away freely, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And pairing that with the homesteading, I think that my biggest struggle, though, I know you asked for (laughs) the opposite of this. No, that's okay. My biggest, my biggest (laughs) struggle has been, we planted this huge garden last year. It's absolutely beautiful. We had someone help design it and and install it. And it's amazing. And it's my happy place, but Mm -hmm. it's big. And it's a bit overwhelming to sort of really be a new gardener. I mean, I've had some, you know, a couple in the past, small little, you know, neighborhood gardeny things, but to really say, okay, we're doing this. And then also try to learn preserving and all of it kind of at the same time, I'm, I'm starting to go, I need to take sort of one skill Mm -hmm. per season and try to master that. And I for sure haven't, but just trying to, I mean, honestly, blogs like yours and courses and stuff where people just break stuff down and and I'm so Mm -hmm. visual, I need to see it if I do it a couple of times. But I think the biggest trick or tip is just been involving my children. I have a Really, my 11-year-old daughter is the one who is the most excited about all these things, homesteading and all the things in the kitchen. And so she's become my right-hand my right hand gal. Yep. And so getting to <laughs> yeah. you know, teach her and go, this is a part of your education as well. And if we don't get to a certain subject today, but you're in the kitchen with me canning or you know, baking or whatever, I feel like that is such an important skill to give her. So it's kind of mm-hmm. killing a few birds with one right. stone. Right. <laughs> Yeah. And is that your oldest child? She's my second oldest. So my oldest is a boy. Okay. He's almost 13. And he he loves helping out with the animals and all the building and things around the farm. My husband does so much of that. I really can't take a lot of credit. The garden is sort of my domain, my biggest domain at this point in the home. Mm -hmm. And everything else outside is mostly his. And so I'm so thankful for that. You know, we work together from home on our own. He's my manager. And so we can both sort of make our own hours and say, okay, today I'm going to spend a whole day working on this. We have this cottage from the 1800s that was was really the main house, and they moved it in the 70s. And it's got so much potential. But right now it's just his workshop, and he's trying to get things all organized. And then pretty soon we're going to probably – I'm going to say, okay, let's find another place for your workshop because we really want to turn it into like a livable space. Uh-huh. Um, but there's always a project on the homestead. Yeah. I'm sure you know that. There is never never a day where you go, hmm, what shall we do today? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, sometimes it can be hard to decide which thing to do. But as far as there being mm-hmm. no options, that's never the case. So you're, never the case. your dynamic is so, so similar to mine, which is very unique. It's very unique. Yeah. So, you, you know, because my husband's home too – and each yeah. day, even trying to figure out what to do with the time that you have can be a little bit tricky and you have to get on the same page. And if you guys are like us, we have meetings like somewhat regularly where we're like, OK, what's working? What isn't working? And then he'll want to write down like what's what times do I need to know this week? Like, mm. is there a soccer practice? Is totally. there like what's going on that I need to know? And then what are we expecting of each other? which is also a whole thing. So how do you guys sort that all out? Like figuring out who does what? And I mean, you've probably been at this for years, which we have too. That's helped, but it's interesting. It it requires a lot of communication. It does. I, you know, I've, I've talked to so many women over the years who are like, I don't know how you do it because so many married couples are not together all day, every day. (laughs) And it's not like we're Mm -hmm. sitting next to each other 
all day. Like we're, no, hardly <laughs> ever. <laughs> we, I'm yeah. like, I didn't see you all day. How was your day? Right. Um, <laughs> but there is this beautiful dance back and forth of, you know, today I schooled the kids all morning and he took them out to lunch and he's like, we're just hang out till you're done. <laughs> we'll come back because, mm-hmm. um, we don't currently have any sort of dedicated space. And my children were like, why do we have to leave? I was like, do you, you see this home? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I am out in the open right now. It would be chaos. But then they heard it was Chick-fil-A. They got excited. Um, yeah, <laughs> but I think, I think, yeah, I mean, we have those, those, not formal, but those check-ins all the time. Um, we share. Yeah. Yeah. Very informal. Yeah. We share calendars. I'm sure you do too. That helps a lot, but I often need to go, Mm -hmm. okay, what changed? What, you know, what do we have going on this week? And and there's a lot of it's constantly changing. Yeah. There's so much freedom in that though, to be able to say, Hey, I, you know, I need to get this done. Can this happen? Or can you focus on this because X, Y, and Z is happening next week. And so we need to make sure you know, this gets done first or whatever. Um, so it is just a constant training and communication and sanctification as you, as you grow with each other and, you know, try to try to serve each other. So it's good. It works. I want to take a quick break to tell you about my favorite makeup and that is Tubes & Co. So Tubes & Co is an organic, natural skincare line made by a small company us made in the us based in the us that the the products are not just natural and organic but they're also really great i've found that to be a major hole in the marketplace over the last several years i wanted to wear natural makeup but i also wanted to have my face look like it was wearing makeup after more than about 15 minutes i've even tried making my own makeup and a lot of that was just very insufficient so i have my tubes and co makeup my favorite product is definitely the foundation i have referred this to so many people in my real life everybody loves it just the other day my sister my youngest sister tried it for the first time and she was like wow i cannot believe the tubes and co makeup it is officially my favorite makeup so that's been the reaction from basically everybody i've referred it to i love their mascara i just started using the natural eye makeup palette absolutely love it my favorite thing is well other than the foundation is the eyebrow pencil love that thing also a huge fan of all of their skincare so their cleansers their serums always makes my face feel so great especially as we're getting into some of the colder months and the wood stove's going and everything's all dry I will apply the serums all throughout the day and use the cleansing oil at night to really cleanse my skin and moisturize it at the same time. Tubes & Co. is offering Simple Farmhouse Life listeners 10% off your order with the code FARMHOUSE over at tubes, that's T-O-U-P-S and co.com. Tubesandco.com, use the code FARMHOUSE. Yeah, we were just having this discussion this morning Whenever, because we're kind of easing into school and when this episode comes out. So just so people know, this is recorded like weeks ago. So if you're like, what? You're just now starting. It's it's late August as we're recording this. So we're easing back into getting out the math lesson. You know, we as homeschoolers, we have a philosophy of learning all the time. You know, we're always right. doing things that kids are learning because we're all together and we're doing things. We're productive. We're not just sitting there. So obviously there's learning. But we're getting back out like the math lessons and like the certain kids who need to practice reading each day, we kind of are easing into it. And this morning we were having this discussion of like, when both parents are home, like you can run into this where you both are waiting for the other one to like, like not take control, but like decide what, what direction we're going today. If you haven't set it out beforehand. And you know, Mm -hmm. there's, there's certain things that a wife is better at organizing and, you know, heading up and then there's certain things the husband and so sometimes we were like wait a minute I think we were both waiting for the other one to be like all right now we're doing this have you guys ran into that oh totally it's funny you know today he was home like in the home with us while we were doing school this morning and and uh, when I say doing school sitting down and reading together because I agree school is you're always learning yeah it was a little funny like I was like oh okay I guess, can I do like, you know, like I'm just deferring to him, even though he's like, no, but yes. you just do your thing. I'm just over here. Yeah. Doing, you know, just, I'm just here. If you need me, he was setting yeah. all this stuff up with the mic and the computer. And it's funny how that dynamic is when you're kind of used to something. And so I'm just used to him being here, but 
being acres away doing something, you know, physical and I'm here. Uh-huh. Yeah. But he's like right, he's here. right yeah. here. So yeah. it was fine. It was good. I liked it, but it was just different. So yeah, that's totally a thing. Or even with meals, I mean, 90% of our meals, I'm just planning and doing myself, but he is a great cook and he loves, sometimes he'll just be like, I had a vision to make this yeah. today. Uh-huh. And so there can even be like ridiculous, but like, well, the other day, literally Saturday morning, I was like, well, I just thought you were going to wake up and be inspired to cook something. Right. <laughs> I'm kinda... annoyed that I have to cook. Uh-huh. <laughs> and he was like, well, I can. Would you like me to? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just that communication is really funny. Yes. But I do think the more that you, the more that you communicate your expectations is so helpful. And I'm like, how am I 14 years into marriage and just now feeling like, oh, I can just say, Hey babe, could you do this? Like mm-hmm. and that would be his dream if I would just say <laughs> oh, that. Oh yeah, every husband's of, dream. Yeah. Hmm, I wonder if someone yeah. would, you know. Right. Um, so learning learning that it's important and I think having a homestead kind of forces a little bit more of that because you both are like I cannot do this and that, so I need you to do this. Um, mm-hmm. but I still feel like I'm not great at just being direct. So more No, on that. no. Me neither, but it's definitely been something over the years we've learned and I had five kids and was homeschooling and all the things. And we didn't have a homestead, but we had chickens and a garden before he came home. So I remember what it was like whenever this was all like all mine. And then, Mm, you know, mm -hmm. transitioning through having three more kids, more acres, and then also figuring out like, okay, who is not in charge, but like, you know, you're, you're trying to figure out the direction for the day and, we get in these mm-hmm. routines yeah. usually pretty well, but then there's like right now we're sort of going through a transition period into trying to get back to our like fall schedule. And so we're yeah. we're coming up against like, okay, so how's this going to look? Do we need to write it all down? Do we need chore charts? I'm not really a chore chart right, type, right. but at the end of yeah. summer, especially, it starts to feel mm-hmm. like maybe you want to completely like rein everybody in, you know? Every, yes, totally. I am a chore chart type. I will make them all day long, but uh-huh. it's sticking to them. Well, that's my and problem. Making my I kids make stick one. to them. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, I'm like, this is going to be brilliant. And every mm-hmm. twice a week you're going to do. And then I'm like, oh, it was the day we were supposed, I was supposed to make this child do that. And it is funny because I go, at what point do I need them to be autonomous and go, it's Wednesday. I'm supposed to empty the trash or whatever. Uh-huh. And and at what age, all that stuff. Anyway, that's not what the point of this. I think it's personality podcast, though too. But, but that's, I think that is right. something we were talking about right. today. We have certain kids who are like, we might have to remind this one for years and that we might just have to be okay with it, you know? Yeah, and then certain ones, yeah. it's like you tell them twice and that's it, you know? They so got it. yeah, <laughs> that helps. That helps. Yeah. <laughs> that helps me. <laughs> that's at least sure. what I've told myself. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, no, I think you're I right. was telling a friend the other day, I met up with a friend and she was talking about how she has three kids and she homeschools and they have a little bit of a homestead too. And she was just like, I just can't figure out how to fit like anything else in. And then we started looking at her schedule and realized that she's just not home that much. Like she has a lot Mm -hmm. of outside obligations during the day Mm -hmm. throughout the week. And as far as the, the whole balance thing goes, That is what I've come to the conclusion is that you have to be home most of the time. Like you need to have a very Mm -hmm. home centered life that doesn't really like where you don't ever have to leave, you know, except Mm -hmm. for like maybe, I don't know. We have our setup to where we're, we're pretty much leaving like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, come and go, whatever. But like Monday through Thursday is when we get all this stuff done that people see and they're like, Mm -hmm. how do you get this stuff done? It's really just because like during those daytime hours, we're here. You know, like if you want to be baking bread, cooking from scratch, all of these things, you kind of have to be home. So anyways, that's something that I realized more. I'm like, okay, it's just because we're we're here. Like a lot of the things that you Mm do maybe aren't that time consuming, but you do just have to be home. So how are you guys like structuring your schedule? You said you're not maybe doing the co-op this year or are there other things that you've intentionally said no to during certain times for that reason? Totally. 100%. Um, last year we had several extracurricular activities and the co-op that took an entire day. And I started to realize I had heard homeschool moms talk about this more from the homeschooling standpoint of you have to protect your 
your time at home. You have to protect those hours. Mm -hmm. And what I've realized is the the homeschool versions of things, like we did a a gymnastics class and like a Ninja Warrior class. They were one right after the Uh other, but they were 10 o'clock on a Thursday. And while I loved getting out of the house and having the kids do that, I said, this year I cannot give up morning hours <laughs> through Friday. Right. Like I would rather just go with everyone else at three or four o'clock or in the evening if we're going to do yeah, something like evening that. I can do. Yes. I can do that because if you, for me, if I try to go out of the house first thing in the morning, when we come back, we're all toast. Like it doesn't matter mm-hmm. if we were gone for two hours. School's not going to happen well. Homesteading stuff's not going to happen well. Even just like you said, getting food on the table and trying to get anything made that's beyond just the norm while well, you guys are eating, you know, it doesn't have to be <laughs> special or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, it just doesn't happen. And so it took kind of a year of overcrowding our schedule, thinking we're homeschoolers, we can have all this freedom to m- make us go, no, kind of put some hard yellow lines around certain things. So yeah, we're very similar. My daughter is doing ballet this year. And so far, that's it. We've never been a huge extracurricular family. We will Mm -hmm. do a few more things um, as, you know, I have four boys and they need to (laughs) get some energy out. But again, they do all day long. Yes, yeah. (laughs) I send them outside. They've got tons of places to roam. And um, I make sure we build that into our days as much as I can. So Yeah, I think for us, and that is one of the things where I go, how am I going to make an album? (laughs) But knowing, you know, this fall. But I know that it's it's also easy to go, there is a finish line, it's quick. I have to record 10 songs. So I may be Uh going to the studio 12 times if, you know, it takes whatever. Over the next four or five months, I can can do that. And we know that it's a season and we'll, and, you know, Mm -hmm. things may look a little different. And then they'll be back to normal. So not that there ever is a normal, but you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. That's another thing we deceive ourselves into is like when things slow down, (laughs) you know, they won't, they won't, they just don't, Yeah, (laughs) you end up having another baby or, you know, who knows? Things just have a way of right when you get comfortable. I feel like Mm -hmm. (laughs) they all go a little, a little bit different, but yeah, for us, it's definitely, I, I fully agree that you have to be home and home centered in order to to do these things and that didn't used to be a question i mean a couple generations ago that's just was the norm for everyone yeah. now we're kind of the you know the outliers but it's neat to see i think that there is a re a returning a resurgence of this oh yeah and it is really neat mm-hmm. to see because it's something that like has always been in my heart But it was very easy to sort of dismiss as like, well, I'm just being, that's just naive or selfish. Even I remember thinking like, oh, it's selfish of me to want to be home all the time with my kids. I'm supposed to be doing all these things or I'm supposed to be going out and changing the world. And that's great. And sometimes the Lord has, you know, Mm -hmm. rare things for us to do. But I do feel like we change the world by being home. There's a quote by someone famous that says that. And, And it's really, really, it's so true. So yeah, um, yeah, it's been a blessing to sort of recognize that, and and my husband to honor. Like we have all come to a place of like this is good. This is not. Uh-huh. We have just to protect this, this no matter yeah, what. Like, exactly. What it takes. Yeah, exactly. Like we have made hard choices. I think mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> music industry thinks that I'm retired and have nothing else to offer, and I'm like, cool, whatever. That is fine. I really don't care what you you know if you want to yeah. think that. I also would be fine if I never did another thing like that ever again. But I know the Lord has at least, you know, these songs to get out there and and what he does with them is then totally up to him. And so, yeah, it's just it's really neat to come to that place because we weren't always there of going. This is something good and beautiful and to be protected, you know. Yeah, even if it's 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 worth something, even financially. I mean, because, you know, you're sacrificing things that are opportunities that you could otherwise have. But it's just it's worth something. It has totally. more value than your tour, which would be, you know, obviously very financially beneficial. So I understand that in a different way in my own life, obviously. Yeah. I can't say, yeah. but. <laughs> <laughs> you can do a lot of awesome things though that I can't do. <laughs> <laughs> no one's going to awesome. pay me to sing. <laughs> yeah. I had, um, I had Katie Votberg on my, she's from now that we're a family on my podcast. And yeah. she was talking about how, Basically what you were saying back in the day, 
people didn't have the option to leave because it would have just required just to stay alive, like to do your laundry and totally. to make lunch would have required you to never even think about leaving. Right. And, you know, now we have the advantage of that. We totally have enough time to leave. And I am mm-hmm. thankful for that. Mm-hmm. But then sometimes it's like because of that, we then just never are home and can't get the right. things done. And like the way that I structure it, like this week, my sister and I were going to take the kids to the zoo because I had a child ask me, he said something like, wait, they have elephants at the zoo. And I'm like, oh, I guess I've never taken you to the zoo. <laughs> so <love> we're <laughs> I'm going to flip flop. Normally Friday is my more flexible day where I'm like, oh, we can go do whatever. But yeah. I'm just going to flip flop it. Like, so we're going to take them Wednesday because Wednesday it's going to be a lot cooler. It just makes more sense. Yeah. Like the temperature is going to spike again later this week. And awesome. And, you know, but still I need like, I don't need every day home. We do a lot of things, but like right. I need four days ish per week where pretty much from the time I wake up till 5 p.m., maybe there's some extracurriculars in the evening. Sure. I need to be home that mm-hmm. whole time to accomplish like all of this home setting, homeschooling stuff and create the environment for my kids where I feel like it's a naturally educational environment, even if we don't right. do school. Um right we're still being productive at home. And so protecting that time, even though, like you said, there's so many homeschool opportunities, right? Like specifically for homeschoolers where you get the kids in the car, you drive, and then they're, it pretty much messes up your whole day. And then you think, okay, but all we really did was gymnastics for an hour, you know? Right. Oh, 100. That, I mean, that is where, (laughs) that is where I was last year. It was like, why are we not getting all of our work done? Why are we so behind on all these things? Not that I've also lightened up a little bit on like, yeah, who am I catching up with? But right. (laughs) You know, why does it feel like what we're not able to do the things that I want to get done in a day? And it's like, yeah, because every day is interrupted or has this bit of like, well, we've got to stop and go do this and then we'll come back. And it's like you never come. You never come back to Mm -hmm. where you were when you interrupt that flow. um, It just changes. And that's it's okay, like you said, if there's value to that or you go, this is worth yes. whatever. Yeah. Or like, hey, this one day we're going to keep as like a, you know, float day. We can do whatever we want. I love that. I mean, weekends, it's funny. When you work from home and you and you homeschool, you think, oh, well, I'm not going to do things on Saturdays when everyone else is. I'm going to do them in the uh-huh. middle of the week. And sometimes we do. But there are often times where there is just a natural sort of, hey, we've worked all week. Now we yeah. want to go on a hike or go to yeah. the zoo or go whatever. I know you think weekends wouldn't matter, like, but they do. Ugh. Like they still matter to us. <laughs> they still it, do. It's no difference, but they 100%. still do. <laughs> yeah, because we're working. Even though we don't go to and sit in a cubicle for eight hours a day, like when you wake up and you, as a homemaker, really, I mean, we are working full-time jobs. And so even being able to give yourself a Sabbath, it does matter. And so, I mean, I guess we could put it on a different day, but the world is set up to kind of all do it at the same time. Yeah, I know. It's probably just leftover from like the days whenever Luke did work Monday through Friday. It's probably why. But it just feels, I feel more like I'm allowed to just totally, you know, leave the farm, if you will. So for sure, that's what we do. Yep. My friend, she was telling me, I always make these schedules and then I realize that I'm not home to do them. So that's another thing too, is you might set up schedules and routines that feel like your chore chart, like feel like, okay, this is going to help us to do things better. But then as soon as I leave, then yeah. it's all thrown out the, it's window. Out the window. Like 8 a.m. we do this. It's like, well, actually 8 a.m. we're getting in the car. Mm-hmm. But on the normal days, and it's like, well, what's normal? Yeah. You know, like that's, is that even, if you don't set it up like that, there isn't normal. Totally. You know, like I you totally actually agree. do your, your thing. Yeah. I mean, maybe listening to this will give someone the permission to say, hey, I'm just, I'm just going to be home because I do think there's a lot of societal pressure to do all the things all the time. Even in the homeschool mm-hmm. community, there are so many things that you can do. There's so many things to be a part of, like you said. Oh yeah, there's you could do something every oh, single and, day, and they're they're valuable, good things. But like you said, if every day is is out of the ordinary, there is something to loving the ordinary days, and I think that's where so much of this comes back to for me is getting my life to a point where I love the ordinary and I am discipling my kids in loving what is ordinary. And, you know, that is what education and discipleship is, is, is teaching you what to love. And so I think, especially when you're thinking from a more classical perspective, that's really what education was until not what, 150 years ago. And that's how people viewed it. And so I think that giving our kids this idea of what 
is good and beautiful and, and what a life worth living looks like, it's not constantly being pulled in 3,000 directions. I don't want to give them that picture. Maybe someone else does and that's fine. I want to give them a picture of the ordinary things of life are, that's the good life. You know, that is what, Mm -hmm. it's a gift and it's what's fulfilling. And so being able to kind of steer their hearts towards, towards being more homeward, not so that they're 30 and just living at home, sitting on the couch, but (laughs) so that they want to go out and create their own homes one day, you know, my, that my daughters will go, I want to, I want to be a mom and I want to raise my children in the Lord. And I want to, you know, do these things that my mom did because they're, they're beautiful. It's so funny when you think of like traditions, I think I'm bad at instilling traditions in my family, but then I hear my kids speak and they're like, oh, I can't wait for fall because we're going to have apple cider with cinnamon sticks. And we're going to, you know, watch this movie or listen to the mom's going to pull these books out. And I'm like, oh, I guess Maybe we I do actually kind do. Of, <laughs> yeah, but it's because yeah, rhythms. Maybe not so the, like set, you know. Totally, but they they learn to love what we love, and so I think that yeah, it's just kind of all works together in this this beautiful way that almost like the Lord designed it that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it it also just makes life go so fast when there's so much going on. It's like, wait, what happened to fall? Like I didn't. I hardly even saw the leaves turn, you know, all of a sudden, you know, we just kind of crave these long days, almost Mm. like these long days where we have time to, you know, put string around our bread and make it into a pumpkin. And then it just goes by in a flash and we never made it because there was so much going on. Things to do, right. Absolutely. Yeah. My husband always says, you just need to say no to things more. And I'm like, I know, I know. I'm, I'm really bad at like today me not protecting future me like anything anytime something's like in the future it feels i like will always feel like doing it then yeah (laughs) i do the same thing like oh that'll be great and he's like are you sure i won't be busy that Uh day uh yeah oh it's i won't have eight kids in a homestead and all that that day totally i'll just be like great up eating bonbons sleeping one yeah (laughs) (laughs) that's funny Uh uh-huh i I know i know it takes so many years, apparently, to learn that, yeah. like, okay, no, even future me will be very busy. <laughs> and we also do this lie thing where it's like when things slow down. And the other day, my sister, she was over and we have a few things that we do during like the school year that are evening things. Mm-hmm. And she's like, yep, stuff's about to pick back up. And I'm like, but when did it slow down? Right. <laughs> like, She's like, oh, it did at our house. I'm like, I guess this is all in my mind. It's like. Funny. Because in some ways, when I think back, I'm like, it did. Like, we didn't do that much. But sometimes I think our minds can even be chaotic. Yeah. Like, there's so much going on in our minds that even if we don't have a packed schedule, it still feels like it zoomed by. And it feels like there was so much. And I'm like, maybe I just put too many things on my mental plate. That is That is a, a word because that is so true. Being present in the moment is I am terrible at that. And I'm something I'm actively working towards is just being here now. I don't have mm-hmm. to accomplish something. I can just sit here and read a book to my child or, you know, stir the, uh, feed the sourdough starter. I don't have to listen to a, a podcast yeah. or, you know, be making a mental checklist, right, like trying right. to just live in the moment. Oh man, it's a tough one. But I think you're right. When we don't, we, things just go past us and we don't even realize that they're gone, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just makes life go so fast. And in my early years of motherhood, it wasn't like that. And I remember days being long. And I I know to an extent, just having so many kids, there just is more going on. And so it doesn't feel like that. And I'm like, it just felt like I didn't have that same feeling of, where's the summer gone? Why did this, you know, why is it this date, you know, back then? And like, I feel like I truly mentally lived a lot slower back then. It makes sense. Yeah. Totally. But I guess I don't have a solution just to say that sometimes it feels like it, even if it's not that busy. Yeah, for sure. For sure. One thing that has been very helpful for me in my from scratch kitchen is a grain mill. Recently, actually probably a year ago now, I upgraded to the mock mill because of its beautiful design. It has this wood finish. It's very thin. It doesn't have a bowl with it. So you can take any bowl that's laying around your house, depending on how much flour you want to make. So it's not this bulky thing always sitting there. And I absolutely 
love it. It makes it to where I have it always accessible. I can grab some whole grains, throw it in really fast while I'm busy in the kitchen, which is what has always stopped me from milling grains very often before. I've been experimenting with kamut, einkorn, spelt, rye. I like to do my basic no need sourdough recipe and then throw in about a fourth of the flour in some other grain. It doesn't alter the recipe very much. It makes it to where it's still very palatable. It's fluffy and delicious, but then we also have that added whole grain. Sourdough starters are also very happy being fed with whole grain flours. And so having a mill is just a very nice addition to a from scratch or a homestead kitchen. Mock Mill is offering Simple Farmhouse Life listeners a 5% off discount using my link bit.ly forward slash farmhouse mock mill. Again, that's bit.ly forward slash farmhouse mock mill, all lowercase. I've had some people say that they didn't see the discount applied. It will be once you go through the entire checkout process. There's no coupon code required. Once you get to the final stages of checkout, you will see that there is that 5% applied. Again, I couldn't recommend the mock mill more. Head to bit.ly forward slash farmhouse mock mill. It'll also be linked down in the show notes or description box. Okay, so on a completely unrelated note, I saw your husband wearing an F3 shirt. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so for all the wives, F3 is like, it's all across the country. It's men's, Christian men's workout group, and they meet at obscene hours. The jour is like 4.30 yes. in the morning. <laughs> I think most of their start at 5.30, but yeah, okay. he gets up at like, it's still, I'm still asleep uh -huh. for sure. Yeah, so does he love uh -huh. it? <laughs> Oh, he loves it. And I love it. It's so funny because almost every time a new guy will come to one of their workouts, mm -hmm. they'll be like, where did you hear about us? Well, my wife found it on Facebook. <laughs> like the wives are like, please go to this. Uh -huh. This sounds wonderful. Uh -huh. Or he'll tell me, he'll, uh, I'll tell him like, hey, I can tell you haven't been to F3 in a couple of days. You're not quite as like jo jovial. Yes. Like he's just a happier dude when he goes. So it's a really cool thing. And I do think every community is a little bit different, just how the faith aspect lays out but the one he's a part of is is so cool i mean they it's basically a bible study you uh -huh. <laughs> know like a you know like a um like a small group every morning out in the rain wind cold snow whatever they have to endure and he i think he gets more excited about the super cold mornings he's like oh i got my headlamp on and my yeah. 20 layers and <laughs> i'm gonna go Middle run five miles i'm like go for it uh -huh. but it's been really cool to see how he has just flourished under, you know, being a part of that and to see the community of, of men. Like, it's really awesome. If, if someone has to move, like five, 10 guys will show up and, you know, get it done. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a really neat thing. I'm like a big F3 evangelist. I love that you know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Your husband does. That's yeah. Awesome. Look it up if you don't know what it is. I think it's just F3.com or something because um, you can find a local one. I was telling another friend about it. I was like, she was saying something like her husband. It's a good way for them to meet friends too, because you know guys yeah. don't really make friends. Totally. Because if you go to a homeschool event, you, you know <laughs> even if like Luke and I were were together, and like he could technically do homeschool some days and whatnot. But like homeschool events, I take the kids to because it's all women. Totally, you know naturally, yeah. and so he doesn't want to go. Right, but F three is where it's like a good excuse to make friends. Like they're all working out, but yet you know they meet people and. Yeah. I mean, well, and even just the way they raise up leaders, like he was, they call it queuing, but basically like leading a workout. Yeah, I know. <laughs> within like a month of starting to go, like oh, they have all these funny uh -huh, things. Yeah, but. he was too. Yep. Yeah, which is really, really cool because I think- There's a whole language. Oh, there's a whole language. I, and I only know some of the guys by their F3 names. So I'll be like, oh, is that- Me too. You know, Patty Me too. Cake I know. <laughs> See, at the pool, I'm like, oh, there's, there's such, such and such. such yes. <laughs> It's so funny. It's an underground, guys. Join join the underground. It is. Uh, <laughs> One of my brother in law does it too, and he calls it a cult. Like not like in a joking <laughs> yes. way. He's like you know the cult, the cult. Like <laughs> I can see why. So, oh man, but yeah. it is. It's cool to see how they just raise men up in leadership, and just to see how they grow. Like the stories he tells me. I mean, there's a lot that he's like, hey, we're I'm just this is between the guys or whatever, in like a you know good way. But he'll tell me of the way he sees these guys grow and change. And he's like, I'm sure they see, you know, I've, I'm different than when I started, but just how they raise each other up. It's really, it's really cool. It's really biblical. It's like, there's not a lot of other places that modern men have those opportunities 
Mm-hmm. Um, so I love it. I think it's great. I think that's why it catches on like it does because mm-hmm. it's funny because I've heard my brother-in-law and my husband both meet new guys and instantly be like, so you have you heard of F3? I'm like, you guys are like, oh, we see him over there. Like, oh, they're telling about F3 again. Like, <laughs> Gotta talk see him about talking to that guy far it. in the distance, like definitely talking about F3. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's funny. So, so funny. I love it. Oh, I, uh, I feel it. like we could chat about homesteading and homeschooling forever. I will let you get back to your kids and whatever was on your to-do list for today. So again, Francesca, thank you so much for joining. And for everybody who wants to follow along, I mean, you do more than music. You have a whole Instagram where you share your homestead and a little bit about homeschool. So that's at Francesca Music. That's right. Yep. Over on Instagram. Is there another place you want people to follow along or is that pretty much your home base at this point? That's the best place for now. Um, we want to yeah. revamp the website, but it's just francescamusic.com. I mean, you can find all my music there and videos and some merch and stuff yeah. like that. But the most up-to-date stuff is for sure on Instagram. On the gram. And okay. uh, yeah, it's so fun. I'm so glad we got to chat and thanks for having me on and just love love what you do and you're such an inspiration so thanks for putting so much out into the world for people like me who are new to all of this to learn and literally almost every time someone shares a recipe or something I'm like that looks so awesome where did you find that it's like nine times out of ten it's you so I love that if it's sour it's awesome. sourdough definitely it's sourdough, sourdough. <laughs> yes yeah but just awesome. so thankful for for what you do well thank you I appreciate that All right. Well, thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Simple Farmhouse Life podcast, and I will see you in the next one.